Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bokit, how are you doing? Today's class will be on how to draft a basic bodice pattern, which will be the half scale, meaning from the nape of your nape right to your waist. It is very, very easy to make and I'm going to show you step by step on how to do that. I already made a video on how to take your accurate body measurement, which I will put a link in the description box below. So, before we go to the work table, you can check out my other channel, the key signatures for lovely DIYs you can make right there at home. And then you can follow me on Instagram, the key signatures, and on Facebook, so innovations. So, right now, let's go to the work table. I have my pattern paper ready for drafting, and then I have my measurements all written out here. So, ensure you take your, down your appropriate body measurement. Then I already have my line draw set out, which I'm going to explain. So looking at it first, this will be my center back, and then this will be my center front. So let's quickly go over the line. So the first thing you will need is, for the wideness of the box, is half of your bust circumference. From my paper here, I have the bust circumference to be 38, and half of that will be 19. So looking at what I have here, I have 19 inches. Can you see that? All along. And then you are going to divide it in the middle. Then how do you determine the height? You will need your back waist measurement. From my measurement here, the back waist measurement is 16 and half. Then I have 16 and half here. 16 and half, 16 and half. But when I got here, looking at the center front, you will see it is more than the back. I'm going to explain that. So after doing that, you just cover up your center back alone with the back waist measurement of 16 and half, as you can see here. The next thing will be your ham side depth or your ham hole. How do I determine that? I, I told you from the video on how to take up great body measurement. All you have to do is to divide your back waist measurement into two. And when I divide the back waist measurement of 16 and a half into two, I should have eight and quarter. Then you will add extra quarter of an inch to half an inch to that. I have eight and a half inches for the ham side depth, which I'm going to square up to the center front. So when I get to the point where I will explain this extension, I will explain that. The next thing we are going to do now is to insert the back width measurement. The back width from the measurement I have here is 14 inches and half of that is 7 inches which I will measure from the center back line. So that is the back width. The next thing will be to insert the neck width now. The neck width varies from small size to medium size to plus size. I explained that in detail in a online class on pattern drafting. So for a medium size, I'll be making use of two and three quarter. So from this edge, you measure two and three quarter. Having done that, then I will now have to go up to determine the neckline. This also varies with the sizes. For medium size and above, you make use of one inch. Why? For extra small and small size, it is, it is lower than one inch. You make use of two and three, uh, three quarter inch and all that. So for a plus size person, I'll be making use of one inch. So that was why I refused to close this hole. So this now will now determine how you close the front panel. So since I came up by one inch, that means I will have to extend the center front by one inch, which I have here and also here. Then I can close it up. I hope you understood why I extended it now. We'll now move on to curve the neckline. So to curve the, out the neckline, you just go in about three quarter of an inch, which has to be straight before you curve your neckline.
so this is what I have for the back neckline. The next thing to determine the shoulder slope, just from this center back line, measure half an inch. And then we are going to connect a line from here down to the slope. But before we do that, you need the shoulder measurement. Half of the shoulder measurement I'm working with will be seven and a half because the shoulder measurement for my measurement is 15 inches. Half of that will be seven and a half. And remember, we have taken in two and three quarter inch for the neck depth. So just take the two and three quarter inch, place it at the edge of the neckline here. Can you see? So after placing it, then you now have to rotate your measuring tape till you have seven and a half. So to make that easier, I'm just going to mark a parallel line. So with my pattern master, I could get a nice parallel line. Can you see that? So take the two and three quarter, then rotate to have seven and a half on this little line we have. That is the shoulder slope. The next thing before we cover the handhold is to insert the bust measurement. From my measurement, I have the bust circumference to be 38, which I will need to divide that by four. So when I divide that by four, I should have nine and half. So nine and half will be exactly the width of the box because that was what I used to determine the box measurement. So nine and a half is exactly the width of the box which is here so right now let's move to the armhole region the next thing will be to go up by two inches from the arm side depth so this will be our first notch then i'm going to divide whatever i have here into two which is six divided by two will be three that will be the second notch then i can connect with my armhole core Make sure you move away a quarter of an inch from the first notch here. The handhold is formed. The next thing I'm going to do is to insert the ball span measurement. And to determine your ball span measurement, it simply means the distance from one of the, the first nipple to the other. That is what I mean by ball span. For this measurement, it is 8 inches. Half of that will be 4. Then I'm going to measure from the center back 4 inches. and then connect the straight line. Next thing will be to insert the dart and then by standard, half an inch is nice. Half an inch on both sides, half an inch here, half an inch here. From the ham side there, come down by one inch and connect the dart. is from the last thing we need on the back pattern is this we need to insert the waist measurement the waist measurement for this pattern is 30 inches so i will need to divide that by four when i divide 30 inches by four i'm going to have seven and a half but remind remember we have already taken one inch here for the that so that needs to be had back to the measurement so which means seven and a half plus one inch here will give us eight and half then you can connect from the bust measurement to the waist so we have the pattern with the back panel ready so let's move to the front pattern for the center front the first thing we are going to insert is the chest width and the chest width from my measurement is 13 inches. Half of that will give me six and a half. So I'll have to measure from the center front six and a half. The back was seven. Okay. 
always confirm your measurements. So that is the chest width. The same. The next thing we are going to do is to insert the neck width, just as we did for the back. And for the back, we made use of two and three quarter. The same thing we will use here. Two and three quarter. Then for the depth, you just measure three inches. And you can just add one eighth of an inch to that, so that that will be for the measurement lost when you are taking your curve. Having done that, we connect it to first make this a little bit straight. Can you see that? Now to determine the slope of the front. We will go back to the back. Remember, we came up by one inch from this nape line. So just place your one inch here. Then after the one inch, we came down by half an inch. We took some total to one and a half. So for the front, it has to be half an inch extra. So one and a half plus extra half, that will give you two inches. Come to the front to place two inches. And at that point, just make a parallel line. So with this line, I will get that up quickly. After doing that, come back to the back, measure whatever you have here on the shoulder. Here I have four and three quarter. Bring it back here from this point. Rotate it to so have four and three quarter. Which is here. Look is formed for a smaller size pressing, you won't have as much as this slope. So, you can I advise you to join our online classes. I explain more in details because we have enough time there. The next thing now is to go up by two inches, which will be a notch for the front. Two inches that will be the notch. And I will take the hammer curve to connect that. So for this, since we have the same measurement of nine and a half inches for the bust measurement, I will take that here. So the hammer is four. Before we go further for the front, we will need to insert the bust level or bust point. For my measurement here, I have the bust level or bust point to be ten and a half. So all my measurements will be from the upper part here, ten and a half. So that is the bust level. Before that, that, then we can now insert the front waist measurement. You notice I've not mentioned the front waist measurement. We've been using the back. Now it is time for us to insert the front waist measurement, which is 18 from this measurement. What makes your front measurement more than the back is always the boobs in front of your or in front of you. So that 18 inches now has to be inserted. So just from the nape here now, I will have to measure 18 inches. That means I will have to come down. So when you are drafting your box, make sure you leave some line at the lower part. So just make sure you bring in some line. So this is our new waist now. This was the back waist measurement we've been using, but now we are making use of the front waist here. This is the bust level, and then the ham side date. So quickly now, we need to insert the bust pan measurement as we did for the back, which is four inches. It is actually eight divided by two to give us four. So on this bust level, you measure four inches. Coming down to the new waist, you measure four inches.
Can you see that? So it is time for us to insert the dart. Usually for someone that is busty, you need to take more darts than the usual half an inch on both sides. So for someone that is, but for a medium size, you could make use of three quarter on both sides. Even for myself as a plus size, I make use of three quarter on both sides, unlike the back, which is half an inch. But if you are not so busty, just make use of half an inch. It is just fine. But for this, let me just make use of three quarter on both sides. Three quarter, three quarter. I'll try to make a video on how to read the measuring tape. I wish definitely do that. So back to this point, this post level. For the back, we came down by one inch. For the front, you can also come down by one inch. For a buster pressing, how busty you have, one and quarter, one and a half is fine. So, that. so the last thing we need to do is to connect the waist of the front to the back. So just take your ruler or just make a little bit curve and then curve it straight here. But we need to insert our waist circumference the way we did for the back. Now pay attention here. The waist circumference is 30 inches divided by 2 by 4 will give us 7.5 inches. For the back, we just added one, but for the front, no, because we took in three quarter on both sides. So three quarter on both sides will give us one and a half. So that means I will add one and a half inches to the seven and a half to give me that seven and a half plus. That should be nine inches. Seven and a half plus one and a half is nine inches. That nine inches should be placed on the back waist measurement, not this new one. Nine inches. You just connect with your ruler. Can you see that? So our basic bodies is formed so easy. Can you see? So this is the front pattern, this is the back pattern. The last thing now is to connect from this waist to the bust region. And we are finished. Can you see that was pretty easy? So just take your time to watch this video over and over again and you're going to love how you're going to do that. So having done this now, all I'm going to do is to just cut everything all out with my rotary cutter. Gently around the whole area. So this is the back. I'm going to cut out the front. This is what the pattern looks like. This is for the back and this is for the front. So hope my tutorial has been helpful. Hope my tutorial on how to make this basic bodies has been helpful. If it has, please give me a giant thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Share the link with your family and friends. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Blicky Signatures. I have to go now. Bye.